Okay, welcome back. So, when we last left off, I was talking about these definitions of mark and line, and also the ways of thinking about how lines can create shapes or create values. And these are important things to help us think about uh, how lines, as well as marks, are used in artwork. So, I also include this page to just show you all the, the types of, you know, like when you do a Google search and you do an image search for like types of lines and all the different diagrams people have made uh, showing the different ways they think about lines. Um, I really like especially the one on the far right with the engineering drawing lines and all of the thought that in, you know, for actual technical drawings, the different types of lines and what they might, all the different things might uh, describe in a, in a technical drawing. So then we could look at two drawings like this and really think about how um, the variety of the movements of line, the different types of line, calligraphic line versus less calligraphic line, but also uh, something called the change of line weight between light lines and dark lines, and whether the change of line weight is created just by the change of value of the line, or is it change of the thickness of the line, like the line is actually getting bigger and thinner, or is it that the line is actually getting lighter or darker? And then when we think about those things, like all those different qualities, all those different things that lines and marks can do, and then start applying them to looking at an artist like Susan Rothenberg, we can get to see that something like her hand, the way she makes her artwork, the way she puts down marks, is in a way a kind of a language, and that it functions in a certain way, it does certain things in the paintings. Um, that is different from the way anybody else would put down a mark, and how that makes her paintings unique, and it's still hard to to really pin down what we mean when we say expressive, because we can't, you know, we can't sum up that expression of, let's say, a Rothenberg, or either of these Rothenberg paintings, in just one sentence. But it gives us more of a clue as to what we mean by that. But I still want you to be skeptical about this idea of expressiveness, and so once again, I want us to consider some comparisons, like a comparison between this friend's Klein. Right, which is a classic um, example of American uh, abstract expressionism. And it's loose and gestural, big and bold. Um, but Lichtenstein made a piece that was very much a critique of that and almost mocking that and pointing out that that kind of looseness and gesturalness can be manufactured in a very um, non-gestural, very careful, contrived, almost, uh, almost a manufactured kind of way like a scientific process. Or here's another example. On the left is a painting by Frank Arabak, and on the right is a painting by Glenn Brown. The difference is that even though the Glenn Brown actually looks like it's even more gushy and built up than the Auerbach, and by the way, the Glenn Brown is a painting that is based on a painting by Frank Auerbach, but the main difference between them is if you see the Glenn Brown in person and you walk all the way up to it, the paint surface will be painted absolutely flat. All of those big, fat brush strokes that are in his painting are fake. They're not real brush strokes. They are painted with a tiny little brush, making the illusion of big, giant, um, gushy brush strokes. But there's no thickness to them whatsoever. They don't actually exist um, physically. They only exist as an illusion on the surface of the painting. And that's where we're going to end this lecture. Next, we're going to talk about drawing. And when we talk about drawing, we'll talk a little bit more about differences of line, differences between calligraphic lines, uh, and issues of line thickness. All right. Thank